Maryland sports fans, there's only one sports book in the great state of Maryland with over 50 years' experience booking bets and supporting customers. Bet Fred Sportsbook at Long Shots is now open and is the only sports book in Frederick offering cash betting on football, basketball, world soccer, and more. Visit the Bedfred Sportsbook at I-270 and MD-85 in Frederick, right next to Longshot's Off-Track Betting. Go to BedfredSports.com for more information and your chance to win exclusive merchandise. Must be 21 or older. Play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome to the Lost Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosby, right out of Oklahoma City. We have Miss Ava Gore joining us tonight. Hello. And then we have uh, Nate and Dan from the band Don't Believe in Ghosts out of New York, a super cool alternative rock band that I was listening to today. You guys got some great songs. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us on here with you. This is dope. Yeah, thanks. I'm happy you guys showed up. Like yeah, super that, that intro got me fired up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we that we try to come out strong. You know, we get so many metal bands on here that when I was when I went to go do research on Don't Believe in Ghosts, I was like, this is different. This is cool. I like it. Kind of a different style. Ava, you know. Yeah, it's definitely a nice change of pace. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, have, you guys have done some pretty cool things. So tell me about the band. Uh, when the band started and just kind of the basics of the beginnings. All right. Well, um, we're like a alternative indie rock type of, uh, band. We like to do, you know, indie pop type stuff. Um, kind of whatever we're feeling, like to keep it positive, kind of inspirational sort of, in, you know, lyrically is where we're at kind of, and, uh, we're out of New York city. That's cool. So, what, what year did you guys? Would you what, what year did you guys uh, form the band? I would. I think 2017 is really kind of like when we started to do stuff. We put out. We started putting out some music around then, um, and it's sort of well, like it started, it started off as kind of a solo project of yours, right? And then you slowly added members. And... Yeah, but like as far as like the band, really, I mean, I would say like 2017, it really started to do stuff. You know, that, there's times before that. Of, yeah, of like kind of like locking myself away and, you know, I was in like a heavier rock band, you know, doing all that. I was on the road for three years and came back and, and wanted to do just like kind of like want to just be more creative, you know, like the writing is such an important part of it. So it was important to kind of get away for a little while, write myself into like a new place. And so that like really came out with us playing live in like 2017 and, and, uh, yeah, and then we've just been, uh, you know, building this thing since together. So, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> That's always the you question. You believe in ghosts. <laughs> I do. Well, yeah, I do That's too. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, the title actually, the the band name is really, um, it's about not giving energy to the ghosts of your past. Um, so it's more basically about like how often, like we will overthink things and wonder what other people are going to think, um, and how it sort of like debilitates us in a way. So it was sort of a self mantra, mantra almost for myself, like coming out of this old band, um, and like imagining, you know, what people would think and how they would, uh, you know, how do you redefine who you are, you know, without, um, without feeling judgment from people, you know? So that's kind of like where the name came from. More of the metaphorical kind of route, I guess. Yeah. Did the band, did, when you guys started playing together, was it something that you sought out other musicians or was it something, uh, I guess it's supposed to name, was this 
uh, you knew the guys in the band before they joined Don't Believe in Ghosts. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, Dan was in another band around here. Um, you know, Lex and I played together before. Okay. He was the bass player. Um, so, you know, knew, knew these guys, you know. Um, and then Ken, we got, we actually found him on Craigslist. Cool. Yeah, yeah we is- were both in uh, bands that were active in the New York scene. And we had played a show together in Florida a long time ago. Um, even though we were both from New York City, it was the first time we met there in Florida and the timing just worked out. My band was uh, broken up. My band of seven years was broken up just around okay. the time that he was looking for um, guys. And he reached out to me just to kind of fill in. I was doing a uh, session musician kind of work. And, uh, you know, he just wanted me to fill in for a show at a really good big venue. Uh, and it was a cool opportunity. So you know, we kind of hit it off from there and the rest is history. So backpage.com is where you found each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> actually, it was on gdate.com. <laughs> you know, there should be a, there should be like a, a Craigslist just for bands. There really should be because I think a lot of people look for music, and there yeah. probably is. There probably it's is. So creepy, out. man. Craigslist is so creepy now. I know it is. <sighs> it used to be so dope. Like you could get it. Things, weirdly enough, it still works for something. Like some people still are on it and. Things yeah. on it, but <laughs> I, I bought a lawnmower from there like two weeks ago. Yeah, I've been this a few times on the show, but like I met my best friend on Craigslist. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, you did. <laughs> so, okay, now, uh, Dan, were you also in a harder band before joining Don't Believe in Ghosts? Uh, de- yeah, definitely harder than this. We weren't really too hard, but we were like an alternative rock band, um, comparable to the sounds of like muse uh and 30 seconds to mars kind of the two a uh, fusion of those two kind of sounds okay i think joining a i think i guess it wouldn't be too much soft i mean those it's not like were you guys in metal bands at all or was it just like hard just harder than this but still kind of I, I, like, like, the last band that i was in was was a lot heavier than this you know and the okay. band before that was even heavier i mean if you go back to like the stuff that I was doing when I was like, I played Dan some stuff. It was just scream stuff. Like, the day. And like <laughs> at that point, it was like, there was a point in my life though, where it was like, you know, you're, you're coming out of your teens. You got like the angst, you got a lot to say, you know, and you, yeah. or you think you got a lot to say. Right. So it's like, and you got to scream it. You're like, everybody listen to me. And that was kind of like what I was doing for a while. And we played two shows with that band at the end that both got broken up by the police. That's and, it cool. was like, and it was after the second time when the cop literally like threw me against a fucking van and was like, I could fucking kill you. And I was like, when I looked over, my parents were there like this, shaking their heads. They were so disappointed. And I remember driving away from that thinking, I think the message is getting lost. Right, 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 right. Maybe there's another way to say this stuff, you know? Right. So. <laughs> you, think, you think writing softer music is takes a little bit more talent, or uh, I guess I, that that would offend some heavy metal bands. So not only I don't want to, I don't want to do that, but do you think writing uh, it's hard? Do you, do you think it's harder to write softer music uh, than it would be just to write some heavy heavier songs? For I don't your, think it matters. Your, your, your opinion. I don't I think, think it matters. matters. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily matters, but I do kind of see that way of thinking with like with metal, I think about like, uh, you know, not as much of a variety of different tones and sounds where it's like, it's usually just like one guitar going straight through and it's one volume. It's all that, you know? Um, whereas like, I guess certain other kinds of music, um, you, you're thinking about kind of a full palette of different colors and sounds and, you know, right. but, but, you know, not to say that certain metal bands these days now have definitely gotten a little bit more creative and incorporated like synths and, and other things mm-hmm. in their music. So I definitely appreciate that. I think it depends on the band, you know? Yeah. yeah, it depends on the band, man. I mean, like, there's bands that aren't necessarily just screaming at you, but are heavy as fuck, you know? Like, yeah. it's like you're 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 suddenly feeling it, you know? And I think, like, the thing is, is, like, there's, there's a... Now, I'm not talking a pop punk like this pop punk shit, but there's a definite punk inside me, like, like old school, classic, like punk rock type stuff like you're you like your misfits fucking thing back there your moms maybe yeah like there's that in in me that i think like still like you can't get rid of live so like a lot of that kind of comes across i live. actually hear that come through sometimes in, in his voice especially in some of the old and the 
very early uh, Don't Believe in Ghost stuff. Uh, one song that comes to mind, and everybody I know is going crazy. I, I, I get a little bit of a pop punk vibe from that song, even though it's you know it's not really. But I like I pop punk. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, pop wouldn't punk. Even, I wouldn't even say pop punk. Like uh, what I'm saying is, it's like it's like just yeah. more, like old school punk attitude in there a bit live, you know. Not like you know Machine Gun Kelly and uh, his girlfriend and you know Travis Barker on drums, you know. <laughs> right. I'm talking like mall pop, you know. <laughs> Do you feel like a different person when you are performing? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like so, before show for me, I have to disconnect entirely. I can't talk. Um, and I have to like sort of like go into go into a different space for me. You know, it's different. Like if like I think it's different if you are, you know, like as a musician, you can get up and just do whatever. It's play by numbers. But when you're when you when it's you when it's your heart, like what, what you're getting across is real feelings and emotions that you're trying to get across. Mm-hmm. You can't just literally step on stage and, and give your best performance. It's either going to be absolute crap or you're going to have connected to what that place is. Cause that place is not a G sharp and an A flat. You know what I mean? It's none of that. That doesn't exist in, 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 in a song that exists in a math problem, you know? So you have to, so like going into the zone, you're getting in your zone, you're going there. And then like that actually like hits me on the other end of a show too, because like it takes me a minute to, to flip back to like being social, you know? Yeah, yeah. For me, at least, you know. Is Dan, it- do, you, do you notice that? Sorry, Ava. <laughs> Cause I want to know if Dan, Dan would go, hey, Nate, Nate, Nate. <laughs> like, he's like, don't talk to me, dude. <laughs> I was going to ask if, if, if it's like that for both of you, even though. Um, yeah, I, I mean, for me, I think it's almost more like I feel more of myself when I'm on stage. Not to be, uh, I don't know if that sounds corny or cheesy or whatever, but it definitely, uh, it feels like a place that's more at home for me. You know, no, I, it, it, I would say it's definitely different, definitely yeah. different than my everyday life, but I definitely feel a little bit more at home on stage. I'm so yeah. jealous. I need to be in a band. <laughs> I need to be in a band. Wasn't so, that you singing that intro song? No, 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 that's a band called Hot Zone. They're on the East Coast. They, they wrote that. I, I literally asked them if they would write me an intro song. They said, sure. And like a month later, they emailed that to me. And I was like, can you bleep out the bad word? They're like, yep. Ten minutes later, I had it. And I was like, done. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I don't even, I don't even talk to them. Yeah, I know. So yeah, they did that. But so, okay, your newest song is Put Your Head Back, right? And that yeah. song just came out. But we're going to play that one. But like I said, we're going to play it. Facebook's probably going to get mad at us. So before we play it, let's go back to like 2019 because wasn't that a pretty good year for you guys? 2019 was was a, a starting year. 2020 was going to, you know, for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody kicked off 2020. They're like, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know? And then, and then no. And then it didn't, it didn't, it did, obviously did not happen. Um, but you guys, you guys had a, a couple, was it, you had a pretty big hit in 2019 that was played on some radio stations, maybe? Don't wake yeah, me up. So, or like, oh, no, 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 just no, during the pandemic, I forgot. Yeah, that was, that was during the pandemic. So 2019, we, um, we had our biggest shows. I mean, like, I grew up, like, I don't know if, if you know in New York City, Bowery Ballroom. I mean, it's like I saw everybody at Bowery Ballroom. I mean, okay. like, just such, such a legendary and cool club. I mean, like, you know watching the strokes come up or watching, you know, Interpol or whoever, you know what I mean? It was like band after band. I mean, I, I think I even saw the verve there at one point, you know, like just cool. insane, like life stuff. And then we, we headlined there twice in 2019, which was, uh, you know, two sold out shows, two separate times. It was like, that That's was the deal. Yeah. And that was like, a, that was a, those were big moments for us. And then we went on our first like kind of little tour out there. Um, and then we were gearing up. We had um, a new single called uh, Living Like This. We had just done a video for it. We were getting ready to release it. We had a big kickoff, you know, for everything that was going to happen for the year party ready to go. And then uh, it was literally March 13th, the night the world shut down. Yeah. It was right on the line on the border, and that, that it's a show that we actually had to push back at least uh, four times, four or five times. And now it's mm-hmm. September 18th, so it's looking like we'll finally be able to keep that date. 
Um, okay. We've been looking for that, forward to that show for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So are all the shows that you were doing, since you weren't able to do them, to do them, did they all, did all of them get postponed and you're actually redoing those shows? No, there's, everything yeah. is going to be fresh. We're going to okay. head out on tour probably this fall. It's going to be all different stuff. The only thing that's kind of like dragged on was this, you know, hometown headlining show at the Knitting Factory, um, which they kept moving the date. It was like, it was it was crazy because the March show was like, well, surely in like two months we'll be able to come back, right? So right. they are like... You know, we'll be back in May, and then it was July, and then it was September, and then it was April, and then it was like, fuck this, yeah. make it September of next year, you know? <laughs> so, Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff actually for, wait, September, so it's September 2022? This year. No. Oh, yeah, September 2021, right? Okay. Yeah, I've actually That's seen some, so, <laughs> okay, I, I've seen some con- concerts actually for promoting already 2022, and I'm like, That's long. A long way, like just some punk thing on a cruise ship. But anyways, how how did how did you guys uh, how did it? Because you guys assigned to a label. Were you, were you found? How were you found? How did that all get to where you guys were signed to Warner? Or right? Is that right? Yeah. So we're on Imagine through Warner ADA. Okay. Okay. And uh, Imagine Records actually. Um, so I kind of work with the label. I help the label out with stuff, right? And. Um, and it was just like, and I know Morgan Rose from Seven Dust, uh-huh. you know, the drummer of Seven Dust. So, you know, he's a good friend. He's, you know, co-runs the label with uh, with Bob. And, uh, you know, we they saw that this record was coming and they've been watching like a lot of the stuff that we've been doing. And they were just like, listen, why don't we put the record out through Imagine? You know, this, yeah. will, be, this will be a cool thing to do. And we were just like... Yeah, let's, you know. Let's it, it. it was kind of a little bit of a conversation a while back where he said something about maybe doing a one song kind of deal um, that we didn't really hear much about. It. We just kept doing us. And then uh, we heard back from him again about doing a full album. And, uh, you know, we all talked about it. And it, it seemed like there was only one place to go and it was up, you know, from doing it. So the thing is, is that like, I mean, it like, yeah, it's like, I mean, I've kind of like have also worked in the industry for a while and it's like, and we've had like offers before and there's this word that they use with these deals uh, in perpetuity and as a, as at heart, like an indie artist, like as an artist, I don't, honestly, I don't give a fuck about anything else. I just want to cry. Right, right, I don't right. really fucking care. You know how many people that I've played in bands with that have all quit because they're like, we're not famous. I'm like, I don't fucking give a shit. Like, <laughs> right. I'm going to do this regardless of yep. who's around me and what's happening. Like, yep. this is fucking happening. So to me, it was never about like getting a big record deal and becoming famous or any, any of that shit. Like I, cause I helped so many bands do that throughout my time, you know? <laughs> that like that wasn't it to me it was about having the ability to create so there were other deals there were other offers that had come along they use that fucking in perpetuity word of taking your master from you forever with no guarantee of anything right so this was a different kind of deal this is this was a super artist friendly deal and it was and it gave us an opportunity to get in the warner system and and you know open some doors for us so yeah sure uh we just got our first record deal uh, ever and like we're Congrats. not so sure about it you know like it's, it's kind of scary um but yeah i don't know would you recommend it to other musicians or do you just think it depends i think it depends i think it depends on the label i think it depends on the deal you know i mean like i i I helped some big bands that are out there you know like over the years and like and watching you know the difference between like each band and what happens it's like it it's you don't you there's no way to predict it right so it really depends on the, it depends on the label depends on who's there what label did you guys sign with uh so we haven't signed yet um it's with uh, out of line music they're from germany okay so is it international deal or is it a, uh just a just for germany uh it's an international deal yeah okay yeah i don't i don't know who they are who else is on that label uh they're like they have goth music i think mostly it's like combi christ i don't know if you know them or uh yeah of course of course i do okay. no they're dope 
Uh, is it well? I, the only thing I would say to you, I mean, like as we go in this direction here, the only thing I would say about that is, is you know, you want to retain the rights to your masters, and if you give that up for like a year or two, that's fine, you know. But like, if they're gonna hold it longer than that kind of thing, you want to have like a level of like what you guys achieve in order to keep that going, you know. Yeah, my understanding, and, and you can correct me, Steve, uh, on this, but uh, is that it, the the kind of deal that we got? At least as far as I've been doing this, I, I haven't seen anything like it. I thought it was a pretty rare, um, a rare kind of deal that we got. You yeah. know, I haven't seen bands um, get that. And I think it's just because we had, you know, we had, a, we had a great relationship with the label for a long time, you know, before we were signed. So, yeah. I'm going to start a record label and sign all of you guys. <laughs> you guys keep all your yeah. shit. I don't care. <laughs> I won't do much for you, but I'll, I'll, you guys can be something. Not, not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, that's good. That's good insight. That's good insight. A good question, Ava. Uh, we well, put your head back. You got some really cool people got their hands on this. Help produce it. We're gonna play that song. Tell us about that first. Don't play the song and see if we get kicked off Facebook for doing so. Okay. Well. We Dan can tell you how we started writing this song. Yeah, we we were on the, on the road actually. Uh, usually, when we write songs, it's usually two of us at a time in a room. You know, a lot of the time it's me and Steve uh, kind of putting together a song, and 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 then each member of the band separately meet with him and, uh, and put their kind of stamp on it. But for this, this was the first time that all of us were actually in a room together, uh, and we we wrote it in a hotel room. You know, the four of us. Awesome. So, yeah. Just so kind we- of, some 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 songs like you know there's like a whole elaborate process like oh we you know we've worked on it for months and we finally finished or whatever sometimes songs just come certain ones come really easy um and they just mm-hmm. kind of fall into place very naturally and it and it just works out that way i think this, yeah and like kind of kind of, songs. this one kind of also evolved a little bit like yeah. what's funny about it is we sat outside at the hotel and we were like we should go in and write a song and we actually like talked about what we wanted the song to kind of do which was like a weird thing beforehand which we hadn't really done and then we went in and kind of like did what we were talking about doing um and then when we brought it back and then uh and then it sort of like lyrically took on a sort of different meaning as like we dealt with the things that we were dealing with as you know covid kicked in and all that yeah. stuff and i lost my brother and all that stuff you know so the the it kind of took on that you know like at first you might listen to it and think it's like a whimsical sort of pop song, but it's really not. And there's like a lot more to it. And it's really just about like getting to that really dark, like fucking place where it's all just sort of like falling apart where you're almost like losing your mind, you know, like during that whole period, people were just at home, like going crazy, like losing their mind, you know? Um, and we tried to articulate that with the video a little bit, you know, where it's yeah. like this total, like, you know, people are doing crazy stuff and we did it in a, in a, in a fun way, you know? Um, but it, yeah, it's about like, just sort of like getting out of that, losing your mind, that crazy space that we get into and like, you know, put your head back in your heart. Like, who are you really? Like, what is, where are you headed? What's your, what are you doing here? Like get back on, pull yourself back on track type of message for yourself, you know? Yeah, let's check it out. And the help, who helped produce this was the, was it the same dude that uh, talked about it before we started? Imagine Dragons and uh, the Killers, right? Yeah. So well, Mark Needham yeah. mixed the song. There you go. A mix, yeah. Okay, mix it. There you go. Yeah, I read that. That was super cool. All right, here is the song right now. Put your head back. Let's check it out. I want to pause it real quick for one second. If Facebook kicks us off, you can catch the rest of the interview on YouTube. We're about to wrap it up anyways. Just want to put that out there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now put your head. What'd you say? I said we filmed this whole video in my apartment. Oh, cool! Nice. The whole thing, awesome. The whole fucking thing. Right. Okay, cool. Hold it together. Sometimes we climb so high out on the rise. Sometimes we find what's right.
pull these vibes together And if I stop, oh don't stop You can pull yourself forever Sometimes we climb so high Out of our minds Sometimes we find what's right Okay, cool. Dude, awesome. dude, that first of all, that video looks fun to make. Second of all, <laughs> did you completely fucking trash your apartment? Oh, dude. yeah. Pretty damn close, <laughs> man. Pretty damn close. Hey, it was boss, we, filmed it, <laughs> we filmed it over three days, and it was like some of those sets took like hours to build, you know. Dang, dude. Yeah. yeah. I, but it looks it looks fun, and you you just buy those props, those like donut props. <laughs> things like that yeah they were just balloons <laughs> yeah oh really yeah yeah donuts. That i don't was- know if you've seen any of our other videos but like we try and create this this like sort of alternate universe so they're all like a little different there's like totally different vibes going on with it and we just try and kind of have fun with it you know like if we're going to go through the work of making a video we should have a good time like making it you know make it cool absolutely yeah dude uh, that song is fantastic uh Ava, what do you think about it? Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Very awesome. colorful. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to be there when you guys made that video, I think. I feel like I want yeah. to be there for that video. Make. All right, so you guys obviously have some merchandise. Uh, tell people where they can go to find your merchandise, your website, things like that. Yeah, don't believe in ghost.com has, uh, you know, basically the hub for everything, you know. Most of the time, like, yeah, well, yeah, you can get there from, there's a store, there's an Amazon store, which has like a bunch of t-shirts because it's like super dope. Like we can upload it and then they just like take care of it all for you, you know? So, but you can get to the, all that stuff through the website. Don't believe in ghost.com. Can you believe we were able to get don't believe in ghost.com? Think about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. That, that is crazy. You know, and I got, well, it's not as cool as yours, but I got the loudspot.net. The loudspot.com was taken, but dot, dot net was available. You got a dot net, yeah. yeah. I'm, the fact that I didn't end up with a don't believe in ghost.net is incredible to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got weirdwolves.com. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. See? Awesome. Dude, it's That's so hard. Awesome. To, I feel like it's so hard to get website names nowadays. But oh, yeah. and, you know, your website and your website, I did go to your website, and I'll tell you, your website does have all your about info, has your touring information, has your merch information, has your music video, your newest music video on it, plus a few other songs on it. So if you want to check out their songs, uh, you can check out other songs, plus their music video, all their merch. It's don't believe in ghost.com. Yep. Yep. And it's plural with the ghost. All right, Ava, do you have any last questions for them? We're going to end the show. Um, uh, you, you said that you like to keep your music uh, positive and inspirational. Um, is it ever hard to not go to a uh, more, I guess, a, a darker place, I should say? 
I think we have with a couple of our songs, right? Yeah, I mean, like, is so there's the self indulgent dark place, which mm-hmm. is sort of like something that I try and avoid. You know what I mean? That's like, you know, the like, oh shit, nobody likes me, you know, kind right. of thing. You know, and it's like, well, fuck them. Who cares, right? So, like, to me, it's more like, um, it's more like they're all coming they're all slightly dark i mean if you think about it you know like if you like living like this is just about our like obsession with with being accepted and with consumerism and like being just everything's for sale and everything's being shoved at you you know put your head back like i said is like about just you're in this really dark place where you're literally losing your mind i mean like imagine how everybody was at home like just like losing their minds during Alice. Like, it's about that it's like coming out of that place you know um you know so like so they're 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 all kind of there but it's i think in in life i mean it's just about perspective right so like we choose the the world that we want to create kind of you know and and that's created by like our thoughts so you know why not try and just like take it and make it a little bit better right so right yeah Yeah, it's so so crazy that you can have an outlook on something then you change your outlook completely changes like your whole opinion on everything it's just like literally it's a, it's a mind shift dude I, I like your heads out i like why you write your music i like the songs you guys are writing thank you so much for coming on the show i don't want you guys to go anywhere i want you to stay uh stay right there i want to thank all the listeners who listen to the loud spot you can find us out find us on www.theloudspot.net we got merchandise on there uh, you can see old podcasts we're on youtube instagram tiktok facebook all that stuff Check out Ava's band also, Weird Wolves, and go listen to some more Don't Believe in Ghosts. Peace out. Rock on. Wait, yep. And much though I did, I kind of fucked it up. That's all right. All right, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. And outro song is right here. This is the Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does something sort of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has to pin show so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, Go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. Much love.